Let's now explore the Style Manager. Before you begin, you need to have a set to work with. You can click on the Style Manager and then locate your set, or you can simply drag and drop your set over any of these buttons and Call PA Manager will automatically detect and load the necessary files. Upon successfully loading your set, you will be faced with this dialog. Call PA Manager automatically tries to detect which keyboard model the set was designed with so that it adapts the user interface to the selected model. You should normally just click Apply to continue, but in very rare cases, if you think the model chosen by default is wrong, or you would like to work with a different model, then simply choose from the list and Cork PA Manager will switch to the corresponding model user interface. Please note, you cannot select an older model version to work with. Only newer models can load older files as shown in this table. Let's click Apply and Continue. This is the Style Manager. Let's explore it. As you see, it actually resembles the actual Cork PA OS screen. On top here, we see the current mode that we are working in. We can still change this if no changes have been made, as I will show you now. I have deliberately loaded a PA2 accept. Let's change the mode so that we work in a PA3X environment. Click on the mode button and select PA3X from the list and click apply. As you just saw, the user interface automatically adapted to a PA3X environment. We now have favourite 11 and 12 banks displayed. I will now load a proper PA3X set to continue with the tutorial. OK, let's keep exploring. Under each bank, you will notice a green or red line. A green colour indicates that the bank is loaded and has styles. A red colour shows that the bank is empty and has no styles. Under each style, we see the actual version the style belongs to. This is very useful and we'll see why in a bit. You can right click on a style and perform these quick actions. Here is an example. Let's swap slow modern with 16 beat. To swap styles, right click on a style and select swap. Then find the other style that you want to swap it with. Right click on it and select swap again. And that's it, done. You can also swap styles from other banks. Let's swap slow rock from our favorite one bank with new rock in our favorite nine bank. As simple as that. You can also copy and paste styles from any bank to any other bank. You can also delete a style. You can also rename a style. And finally, we can enter and view the properties of a style, which we will explore later on. You can now quickly arrange your SDS and pad settings. Along the bottom, we have the STS and pad tabs. The STS tab contains the four STS settings a style has. STS1, STS2, STS3 and STS4. If the button has a green light, it means it has an STS assigned to it. If it's red, it means the STS bank is empty. For those of you who may not know, STS stands for single touch setting. Each STS is like a performance. Three user tracks and the lower group as one item. So each style can hold up to four STS settings. If you right click on an STS, you can rename the STS, copy and paste them from one style to another to save you time. To change a sound, double click on a track. This will bring up the sound select dialog. This is a replicate of the actual dialog of the OS screen. Core PA Manager adapts to every model. So, if you were working in a PA2X environment, you would see the PA2X sound select dialog. Navigate and select your desired sound, then either double click it or click on the apply button to continue. 
As you see, our track sound is now changed and updated. You can also right click on a track and copy and paste sounds between tracks. You can also set the volume and pan settings using these knob controls. Simply click and drag the sliders up and down. If you double click on it, it will automatically centre the volume or pan. You can double click on either the L or R labels to quickly set your slider to these positions. The pad tab contains the four pad tracks that can be assigned per style. Pad 1, Pad 2, Pad 3 and Pad 4. If the button has a green light, it means the pad is a factory pad. If it's orange, it means the sound is a user pad. If it's red, it means the pad bank is empty. To assign or change a pad, simply double click on the pad and select a new pad from the pad select window. You can also right click on the pad to copy and paste pads from different styles. Use these sliders to change the volume, pan and send effects settings. If you wish to load a new set, you can either drag and drop a new set onto this window or you can click on this load STY set button here. To save your set, click on the save as button and the new window will appear. You will need to select a path from here and also give your set folder a name from here. By default, Cork PA Manager automatically adds KPM before any set name, but you can of course change this. And finally, click on Save As to export your style folder. And there we are. We just created our new set. Let's move on. Another great feature is this Generate Report button. This creates a report of all of your styles. Let's click and see what it does. Once complete, the report window appears. This is a quick preview window of the report in plain text format. In the report, you will find every style within each bank, the style version and the page number the style resides on. We can save this report either as a text file, which is what we see in this window here, or even better, we can save it as a detailed HTML file where the data is presented in a table, much nicer and colour coded. You can open these in any browser. Now, let's explore the report we just created. Here, we see details about each bank and style. The style position, style name, style version and the page number the style is on. A green box shows that at this style position, there is a style present. If the box is red, it means the style bank is empty. This report lists the styles within the banks. But what if we wanted to know more details about the style? For example, the sounds each variation uses. Don't worry, we can create this from the style properties window. Let's now explore the style properties window. Right click on any style and select properties. You can also use the Ctrl and P shortcuts to access the style properties window. Let's now go through the features. On top, we have the current style name that we are working on. Beneath it are the style elements and variations. Please note that PA2X styles and below have only two fills plus break. PA3X styles and above have four fills plus break. Cork PA Manager will display these, dependent on the style version. Once again, a variation with a green light means the variation has data in it and a red light means nothing has been recorded for this style element. By clicking through each style element, you can see the properties of each variation. Currently, you cannot copy paste or delete style elements. We may be able to in future versions. Each variation has eight tracks. You can change the sounds of each track by double clicking on the sound and selecting a new sound. 
However, if you check the other style elements, you will notice that the drum track sound hasn't changed. This means you would need to do this operation for every single style element. This is where the remap button comes in handy. The remap button is very useful. It would save you quite a bit of time by automating repeated tasks. We can use the remap button to automatically search through and replace the detected sound with a new sound. This applies to the whole style with all other elements and not just the current style element. Let's see how it works. Clicking on the remap button will bring the usual sound select window. So what we're doing is all instances of our current sound here will be replaced with the new sound that you select. Let's choose a new drop kit. Double click to select the sound. Call PA Manager will warn you to confirm your action. So, replace this current sound with this sound that we just selected. Click Yes. Call PA Manager will search and replace any instances within the style and output the result. For example, here we have nine instances replaced because the drum kit was used nine times elsewhere within the style. You can also right click and copy paste sounds from one track to another. You then have your expression level for each track. This is like the volume but it controls the punch of the sound and your low and high key for each track. These controls the upper and lower bounds of your track. At the bottom here, you have an option to apply these sounds to all other style elements. This means use the current soundtracks from the current style element that is selected and copy and paste them to all the rest of the style elements. This would make every variation have the same sounds throughout the style. Above it, you have another option to display the original style sounds, just like on the keyboard. A style can either use these sounds that are within each variation or use a single set of sounds that have been saved within the style preferences. This means the style would use these current sounds in every variation. Since having this option on and off are two independent things, you can also pass these sounds to be copied and used by all the other style variations too by enabling the apply these sounds to all other style elements option. Whether the original style sounds option is on or off, all sounds are the same. Let's click on the Update Style button to save and update the style changes. Now, if you enable the Original Style Sounds option, you will see that all style elements have the same sounds applied. Clicking the Reset Style button changes and reverts back to the original style, losing all changes. And finally, the Generate Report button will generate a detailed report of our style structure. Here, you can find every sound used within each variation. Once again, we can save it as a detailed HTML file where the data is presented in a table, much nicer and colour coded. You can then use any browser to preview this report. Here it is. Above, we have details about the style. Set name, style name, style position and style version. Every style variation has a separate table and only those that had any data in them are shown. Green labels represent factory sounds and orange labels represent user sounds. OK, let's go back to the style manager. We will now finally explore the import merge feature. This option enables us to load up a second set and copy its contents to our own set. Let's click on the Import Merge button. Find and load another set to copy styles from. Once again, Core PA Manager will try and detect which keyboard model the set belongs to. Let's hit Apply and Continue. You will receive a warning message. This is to state that Core PA Manager currently does not automatically import any associated samples or multi-samples and PCM files. We will talk about what this means in a short while. You can copy and paste a single style or a whole bank. 
Let's copy a single star from our second set to our main set. But first, let's check our style. Right click on a style and select properties. The properties window will now run in a merge mode, which means it's read only and you cannot make any changes. Now, we can check and make sure that our style uses factory sounds. As you can see, all style variations use factory sounds, which means we won't have any trouble copying the style over to our own set. You can still create and save a report just to make sure. Let's exit the style properties window. Right click on a style and select copy. Move over to your own set, right click on a bank and select paste. Our style is now imported. Immediately, you will see the output pane will reveal and update itself. This is a log of all the styles that you will import. It shows which set the style was copied from. Its previous old position and new position. You can then also save this for later use by clicking on the Save Output button. If we check the style properties, you will see that all sounds are the same. Let's copy another style. Again, let's enter the style properties. You can see that the drum and percussion tracks use user drum kits. Generate your report and save it. Copy the style to your own set. Do this for all styles you wish to import. If we now check the style properties, you will see that the user sounds do not correspond. That's because the second set uses different drum kits at those sound locations. If a style uses factory sounds, then you can import and play styles without a problem. But if the style has user sounds which contain samples from RAM, then they may not sound correct since your set most likely will not contain the same user sounds. So, using the output report and creating a style report, will help you achieve this by giving you the information you need to get the style working. By looking at the reports you will know which user sounds you will need to load to get the styles working and then load these manually into the keyboard yourselves. Please check the user manual of your keyboard on how to do this. Okay, let's keep exploring.